Hi, my name is Dr. Megan Markham and I'm a clinical psychologist. Thank you for joining me on Therapy Cable today. We're gonna talk a little bit about neurofeedback. We've had some questions uh, specifically about neurofeedback, what it is, how it's different from regular biofeedback. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So first I wanna introduce biofeedback because neurofeedback is a special type of biofeedback or derived from bi biofeedback. And biofeedback is a mind-body therapy that uses electrical signals to help a person gain a better awareness about their physiological responses. So that could be sweat, it could be heart rate, it could be blood pressure, um, any of those. The goal of being able to manipulate those at will, um, skin temperature, electrodermal activity, or some other examples, and even brain flow. Research has shown that biofeedback is an effective tool at helping a variety of medical and psychological issues, specifically anxiety, um, trauma work, and headaches, I know for sure. So neurofeedback is a little bit different. Neurofeedback is a similar process whereby individuals learn to regulate their brain waves over time. Neurofeedback is sometimes called EEG biofeedback um, to show the current abnormal electrical patterns that are going on in the brain. Um, it enables the user to modify these brain waves over time to achieve a more calm or a, or a healing effect. So let's talk more specifically about neurofeedback now for the rest of the time together. So as I said, neurofeedback is sometimes referred to as EEG biofeedback, and it's an intervention to teach self-regulation of brain function. Typically, there are little sensors that are connected all over the person's brain on the scalp to measure activity with uh, measurements displayed using video or sometimes auditory sounds. Neurofeedback is a gradual learning process that occurs over time and you have to have a specialty trainer so you can't do it at home by yourself. You have to have a specially trained therapist to do neurofeedback with you. Neurofeedback works by providing information to the person about their brain waves. The person is rewarded then for the brain wave activity that is better or healthier. For example, a person with high anxiety might be exhibiting too many beta wavelengths. Beta wavelengths are pretty rapid. They look like little spikes on a chart. And so if you have a lot of anxiety, you're likely to have a lot of those beta wavelengths. And so the goal of neurofeedback would be to reshape those beta wavelengths to something a little bit more healthy. I'm gonna talk more about the specific types of brain waves in a minute, so that should hopefully make a little bit more sense. There are four types of brain waves that neurofeedback um, can help manipulate or reshape. The first are beta. We talked about beta. They're the fastest. Um, they have a low amplitude and they're associated with alertness, um, arousal, as well as engaged cognitive activity. So if you and I are having a conversation, beta wavelengths would be happening in both of our brains. Alpha is the next. Alpha wavelengths are a bit slower. They have a higher amplitude than beta waves and they're associated with non-arousal states, mental coordination, learning and mind-body integration. So some examples of alpha would be meditation, when we're in a meditative state, uh, when we're in quiet reflection, taking a break from work, um, or taking a walk in nature. Those are all activities that would support alpha wavelengths. Theta waves are the next. Thetas are even slower and have an even higher amplitude than alpha. They are associated with memory, learning, vivid imagery, subconscious information, so dreams, um, and a heightened awareness of internal signals. These brain waves tend to be generated when an individual is performing a consistent or repetitive task, which when it is possible to mentally disengage. So if you're just kind of taking your shopping cart, going through the shopping aisles and you know, you're on autopilot, I need this, I need that. Or even if you're just driving, sometimes we drive on autopilot if it's a route that's very familiar to us. These are some examples of when we'd be using theta wavelengths. The last cut type of brain waves that neurofeedback can help reshape are called delta waves. And delta waves are the slowest of the brain waves and they also have the highest amplitude. They are associated with uh, deep dreamless sleep, so not, not while you're dreaming, but when you are not, uh, regeneration and healing. So the best example I can give for this is when you're in a real deep sleep, you're not having any dreams, your body's not moving, um, that's when your, your body is be in a restorative state and that's when the, the delta wavelengths, sorry, the delta wavelengths are, 
are um, coming across your brain. <laughs> okay, so now that we've gone through the different types of brain waves, we're gonna talk more about how neuro neurofeedback is conducted. A neurofeedback treatment session lasts about 30 to 60 minutes. You can do it once a week, you could do it more often. Um, it's again done by a professional who acts as a, an active and a supportive guide to the process. Electrodes are applied to the person's scalp, which allow the patient and therapist to see the brainwave activity. The little signals are picked up by the electrodes and they're sent to a computer where they are processed. The brainwave frequencies are turned into a combination of images and sounds, which is feedback, and the, these are both visible and um, audible to the person. Eventually, the brainwave activity is shaped or reframed toward a more desirable and regulated performance. So you might be asking, electrodes connected to my scalp, that seems kind of painful. Is, is it painful? It's actually not. It's a non-invasive process. Um, and there's no amount of detectable electric current happening. It's a very small amount and you really can't feel too much. Is it safe is another question that you might be wondering. Yes, neurofeedback is completely non-invasive and it's safe in the same way that muscles strengthen after use. If you go to the gym and you know lift and your biceps get bigger over time, it's kind of the same after doing neurofeedback over time, your brain waves strengthen. So other people have asked me how long does it take because I've been in therapy for a while and therapy tends to be a longer process sometimes. Is neurofeedback the same? When can I expect results? So effective neurofeedback training typically takes anywhere from 15 to 30 sessions. Results are not achieved by everyone, but the research states approximately 80% of people do achieve some benefit. So that's really very good when we think about, you know, response to medication or response to other forms of psychotherapy, 80% is pretty high. There was a study about neurofeedback and substance use disorders and 120 patients in a treatment program were studied. 60 of those patients received neurofeedback and 60 received an extra hour of therapy. The participants received between 40 and 50 sessions and the control group, which is the group that did not receive the neurofeedback, they, like I said, they got an extra hour of therapy. So they were doing something at the same time. Anyway, the results showed that the people who received neurofeedback remained in treatment significantly longer than the other group. And after treatment, 77% of the neurofeedback group remained abstinence from alcohol and drugs at 12 months. That's a pretty high number. Most people in recovery um, relapse often within the first year, so a 77% success rate is, is really high. And then 44% of the control group or the, the group that did not have neurofeedback achieved abstinence at 12 months post-treatment, so a significantly higher number in the neurofeedback group. Um, it also showed that attention was improved for the group that had neurofeedback. So the last thing I wanna talk about is, you might be wondering, since we've gone over neurofeedback, am I a good candidate or you know who would benefit from this? So I have a couple bullet points on that. If you are seeking an alternative or a complement to your regular traditional psychotherapy, it might be something good for you. If you want to take a more active role in your therapy, it might be good for you. If you feel like you would benefit from a holistic approach, so a mind, body, spiritual, that kind of a holistic approach, then it might be good for you. If you have a hard time tolerating medication or you get a lot of side effects from medication, it may be something to look into. Clients with substance abuse problems specifically, this is my area of expertise, which is why I mention it, um, that they are more likely to abuse pharmacological medications. And so this might be a good um, alternative for them if medications can be sort of a dangerous or slippery slope. Clients who fail to respond to mainstream therapy, so you've tried maybe talk therapy for a while and it's not working, neurofeedback could be something to look into. Clients who prefer, prefer more natural, um, self-regulated orient therapies, the people who say, I really wanna do this on my own, I wanna be able to control my thoughts better, uh, you might be a good candidate. And clients who have significant amount of time to devote to therapy, for instance, it may take up to you know 50 sessions of neurofeedback for you to see results of if you have severe ADHD. So you have to be willing to put in the time and the commitment because if you 
don't, let's take the same example. If you have ADHD, you're doing neurofeedback, you're supposed to do 50 sessions to get results, you make it to session 12, 13, 14, and then you drop out, you're, you're not gonna be halfway better. You're, it's just, it takes all 50 sessions before you're gonna achieve results. So I think that's important. Some of the diagnoses that I have seen benefit from neurofeedback specifically are anxiety, uh, bipolar disorder, definitely substance use disorder, uh, depression, and um, PTSD. And there are probably more. Those are the ones I have direct experience working with and seeing benefits of neurofeedback. So that's it. I just wanted to give everyone a quick overview. Hopefully we'll have some images to show you a little bit better as well. If you have any specific questions about neurofeedback or anything else that you'd like to leave a comment on, you're welcome to do so below. Also, if you'd like to email me directly and ask a question about neurofeedback, you can reach me at drmarkham at abetterliferecovery.com. Thank you.